Hi, I'm Denny. Hey, I'm Eric. I'm Michael. And I'm Ken. And we're going to be talking about the traditional Chinese <laughs> values <laughs> and the Boxer Rebellion. Yay! Yay! Oh. The Boxers were a secret society, also known as the Righteous and Harmonious Fists. And they were a, a largely a peasant-led movement. And their aims were to repel the European and foreign encroachment onto China in the 19th century. <laughs> As you can see, very anti-foreign and very anti-Christian. Most of the members were peasants that were illiterate and dumb and came from a socio-economic class that was very poor. Indeed, that is China. They, they, they had rather silly rituals, such as uh, physically exercising uh, and tediously, in the, in the hopes that they would somehow be superhuman. The, the boxers eventually started a rebellion against all, all the invading countries in China in 1898. And that leads to the Boxer Rebellion event. Beginning from May of 1900, increasing attacks occurred on Christian missionaries and foreigners in northern China. The Boxers moved on to Beijing, the capital of China, where they besieged the city. However, during August of 1900, foreign forces retaliated and attempted to subdue the Boxers. They ended up slaughtering the Boxers and putting down the rebellion. Boxer rebels, you may take our lives, but you'll never take our rice! However, even though the Boxer Rebellion was put down, uh, the their legacy still lives on, and they still continue to influence many. They still continued to influence many of China's anti-foreign movements in the future. But you just press the record button. Confucius was a minor official who lived during the Warring States period and developed a philosophical and political system he hoped would be lead to a more stable state and society. He spent a great deal of time trying to convince one of the more powerful kings to embrace his system, but while none ever did, Confucius got the last laugh because his recipe for creating a functioning society was ultimately adopted and became the basis for Chinese government, education, and well, most things. <coughs> So Confucius was a conservative. He argued that the key to bringing out a strong and peaceful state was looking into the past and the model of the sage emperors. By following the example of morally upright behavior, the Chinese emperor could bring order to China. Confucius's idea of moral upright behavior boils down to a person's knowing his or her place in a series of hierarchical relationships and acting accordingly. Everyone lives his life, or her life, but mo like most ancient philosophical traditions, women were marginalized in relation to, to, to people and is either a superior or an inferior. There are five key relationships, but the most important one is between father and son, and one of the keys to understanding Confucius is a filial piety, a son treating his father with reverential respect. Ultimately, the goal of both father and son is to be a superior man, Chunzi in Chinese. If all men strive to be Chunzi, the society will run smoothly. This idea applies especially to the emperor, who is like a father to the whole country. Son, you must know all about our traditional Chinese values. It's all about Confucianism. Confucianism is all about your place in society. You understand, son? You understand? Yeah. It's all about respecting me respecting you as a father and you respecting me as a son. If I don't respect you, you can disrespect me, but that don't happen. Son! Oh. Oh. You must listen! No rest to respect me! I said that before. <laughs> oh, son, also it's all about being the Chunzi. Do you know what Chunzi means? It means the superior man. Everyone must be like the Chunzi, the superior man. You must be the Chunzi, I must be the Chunzi. We all are the Chunzi. You understand, son? We are all. What, what else is there? I think that's it, really. Is there anything else? <laughs> no, that's it. Thanks. That's all we needed.